Sous vide literally means under vacuum, but that really doesn't explain what it is or how to do it. Stay tuned, this is Sous Vide 101. To put it basically, sous vide cooking is cooking in a water bath that's held at a very precise, consistent low temperature over a long period of time. It's like slow cooking, but even at a lower temperature. When you sous vide cook, you get really precise results, which means you have perfectly evenly cooked foods from edge to edge. They have an enhanced tender texture that is beautifully moist. It's really easy to do, and it's perfect when you're cooking for a crowd. So how do we manage to cook foods in that water bath at that low temperature in our home kitchens? Sous vide machines used to be very large and used in restaurants, but today you can actually get something called a sous vide circulator. This circulates water, heats the water in a vessel. That vessel could be a stock pot or a big plastic container like this. But by holding that water at the consistent temperature, we now have the perfect medium to do some sous vide cooking. Instead of putting your food directly in water, which would of course leave it saturated with water and flavorless, you put the food into a zipper sealable plastic bag, whether that's a sous vide bag like this, or even freezer bags that you can get at your grocery store. You put the food into the bag with all kinds of flavors, herbs, salt, pepper, anything, even a sauce, and then remove as much air as possible. That's where the under vacuum idea comes from, from the name sous vide. But in fact, you don't have to vacuum seal the bag. You just have to remove as much air as possible so that the bag sinks in the water. As long as the food is submerged by that low, consistently held temperature water, you're going to cook your food perfectly over a long period of time. So when you cook a steak, to 138 degrees, for example, it's never going to go above 138 degrees because the water is held at 138 degrees. What does that mean to you? That means you're going to have a perfectly cooked medium rare steak. Now the first thing people think about when you think about sous vide cooking is steak. And sure enough, sous vide is a perfect way to cook steak evenly from edge to edge, but it's also really great for chicken breasts, for pork chops, for sausages, for burgers, even for large pieces of meat like pot roast or brisket. Those large pieces of meat get cooked to a perfect tenderness without overcooking or ever becoming dry. Foods with sauces can work well in sous vide as well. For instance, beef stew or a chicken curry. Mix the meat and the sauce in the bag and then sous vide everything together for the perfect blend of flavors and you're never going to overcook anything again. You can even cook foods in little jars in a sous vide. You can cook egg bites, little puddings, even yogurt can be made in a sous vide container. To help you understand sous vide a little better, let me show you by doing a simple steak demonstration. Here I have a ribeye steak and just some fresh thyme. The first thing I need is my water bath set up and ready to go. So I put hot water into this container. Then I'm going to attach my sous vide circulator and I'm going to set this for the right temperature. Now the secret to sous vide cooking is a mix of time and temperature. When you're cooking a steak you're going to cook it to a temperature based on the degree of doneness that you're looking for. If you're cooking chicken or pork you're actually looking for a safe temperature for those foods. So I know that I like my steak a little bit more than medium rare, between medium rare and medium. So I'm going to set this sous vide circulator to about 138 degrees. If you wanted to cook your steak for rare, you would set it to 125. For medium rare, between 130 and 35. For medium, around 140. But the best way to remember all of this is to take a look at a sous vide cooking chart. That's going to give you all the temperatures you need for whatever it is you're cooking. And you can find one on my website in the cooking school. So I'm going to set this to 138 very simply just by setting that temperature. And now I have to set the time. Time can be a little more tricky because you have so much flexibility with the time. You need to cook sous vide foods for generally at least an hour. But because it only goes to that 138 degrees Fahrenheit, you actually have as much time as you need within reason to cook that steak. You can cook it in as little as one hour, or you can leave it going and cook it six hours and it will be the same degree of doneness all the way through from edge to edge. 
So to get your steak ready, you're gonna need a bag. That bag can be a sous vide bag or it can be a freezer, not storage, but freezer zipper sealable plastic bag. Use a good quality bag because it's critical that no water get into this bag when you put it into the water bath. I'm gonna fold over the edge and then I'm going to season my steak. Now, if I'm cooking my steak for just one or two hours, I might put salt on it right now. If I'm gonna go for six hours, I'm gonna season it at the end of cooking, not at this moment. So let's go with some black pepper on both sides. And I'm gonna place it into my plastic bag. Now is my opportunity to add some more flavor. So I could put some fresh herbs in if I wanted to. You could even, if you like, put some steak sauce inside and cook it with the steak sauce. But I'm just gonna put some thyme on either side of this steak. And then I'm going to seal it in this bag. Now, what has to happen is we have to get the air out of this bag. And there are a few different ways to do that. If you have vacuum sealer bags and a vacuum sealer, that's a perfect tool to use, but you don't need it. I'm gonna use the water displacement method to get the air out of this bag. It's critical to get the air out because it's critical that this bag sink in the water. That food must be completely covered in water in order to cook properly. So to do the water displacement method, simply lower this bag while it's still open into the water bath and let the water push all the air out of that bag. It's a little bit tricky because you don't want the water to get inside, but you do want as much of the air out as possible. Just like that. So with that done, you're going to let that go into the water bath. One handy trick that I use is to clip the bag to the side of the container so that there's absolutely no chance water can get in through a seal that I might not have sealed quite properly. If you're having a hard time getting that bag to sink in the water, you could put a weight on the bag or sometimes even something as simple as a pair of tongs will just make sure that that meat is completely submerged in the water. Now this is gonna cook for as long as I need it to, at least one hour and as long as six hours. I mentioned before that with sous vide cooking, you can't overcook your foods. That's not quite true. If you let this go for longer than six hours, the texture will start to change a little bit and could be undesirable. So don't let it go forever or overnight, but just know that you have the flexibility of anywhere between one to six hours to pull that steak out and finish it. That's the next step, finishing this steak. Let me show you how. Now this steak has been cooking for about four hours now, and we set it to 138 degrees. It's time now to remove it from that sous vide water bath and get it ready for its next step. Now the one disadvantage with sous vide cooking is that it doesn't brown the meat at all. So when you take the meat out of the bag, it doesn't really look that pretty. So we need to now give it some color and a little bit of flavor by searing it at the very last minute. Dry the steak as well as you can with clean kitchen towel. And then remember, did you season the steak beforehand or not? If you didn't, you're gonna to wanna to season it with some salt right now. This steak is cooked perfectly, so it's really important that we don't overcook it with this next step. I'm preheating a cast iron pan on the stovetop until it is very hot because this sear is going to be about 30 seconds per side and that's all. We want to make sure we get the most out of that pan to get the most color we can in the shortest amount of time. So the pan is really, really hot. I'm going to add some butter and immediately add my steak to that pan. Now, if you have some weights, you can weight that steak down to really give it a good impact with the pan. Otherwise, just wait that 30 seconds and then flip it over. There's no need to move that steak around in the pan while it's cooking. Now, if you're cooking larger pieces of meats or anything that you would usually braise, like beef stew or a pulled pork, you're gonna to wanna to do something called a reverse sear. That is searing the meat first and then putting it in the bag. You can do that with steak as well, but I prefer the texture given with the sear at the last minute.
A quick 30 second sear is all it should really need and now you can put it down on your countertop. Now resting meats is always important, although it's not as important when you sous vide cook because the steak has not undergone an intense heat situation. So let it sit for a few minutes while you prepare the rest of the plate, then it'll be ready to slice. So let's slice into the steak and see how perfectly evenly it is cooked. Look at this steak. This is a beautiful, beautiful medium from edge all the way to edge. You're not seeing a line of medium in the center with gray edges on either side. You're seeing perfect medium all the way through and that is what sous vide can do for you so that you never worry about overcooking it even if it took four hours to cook this steak. You can also cook foods with sauce already included in the bag. That means you could actually make your own meal that you could freeze and just reheat in a sous vide later on. Here I'm gonna make chicken with red curry and coconut. I've made my sauce ahead of time on the stove top and now all I have to do is add that to chicken in the bag. And seal this up Again, we're sealing the bag, not because it has to be vacuumed, but because it has to sink in the water, so we have to remove the air so that it doesn't float. Here's another technique you can use to remove the air, and it's called the counter method. Simply hold the bag firmly and let it hang over the edge of your counter. Bring the bag so that almost all the air is out from the end there, hold it flat, and then seal it along the countertop. Now all the air has been removed and it will sink in the water bath. So now all we have to do is submerge this into the water bath and then as a safety precaution, I always like to clip that bag to the edge just to make sure that in case I've made a mistake in the seal, no water will get in the bag. This chicken is gonna cook at 140 degrees for at least one hour or for as long as four hours. Now you might wonder why bother making a stew in a sous vide water bath but the reason is really about the texture. This chicken will be so tender with no moisture loss because we've cooked it at such a gentle temperature. So after cooking for at least two hours at 140 degrees, we know all the pathogens that could possibly hurt us are gone from this chicken. It's ready to serve. Now remember, you can cook it for as little as two hours or as long as six hours without any concern. You're gonna have beautifully cooked chicken that is super moist and super flavorful because it's been cooking in this bag of sauce. The next step for the chicken is to take it out of the water bath and now you can serve it. Now, I like to heat the foods up a little bit because this is cooking at 140 degrees. I'd like to eat it a little warmer. So I quickly just heat it in a Dutch oven before taking it right to the table. So now we've spent all that time making sure we didn't overcook the chicken, so we only wanna heat it really briefly on the stove just to get that sauce hot. While you're doing that, make sure you prepare your plates, prepare your garnishes, get ready to serve. As soon as it comes to a bare simmer, that's good enough for me. And we can serve this beautiful chicken with red curry and coconut over some rice and know that every single morsel of chicken is cooked perfectly. A quick little garnish, and you have made very easily, while you weren't watching, a perfect chicken curry. Now little jars make their own perfect watertight, airtight container that will sink in water when filled with ingredients, so they are a perfect tool to use in your sous vide cooking. You can use jars to make yogurt, to make little puddings. I've even made cheesecakes in there, and they're perfect for egg bites, which you can make at the beginning of the week, have 12 egg bites ready to go for running out the door on the weekday mornings. Here's how you make an egg bite. You've taken some eggs, some cheddar cheese, and some cream cheese, blended it up in a blender with some salt, and then we put some ingredients that we'd like to have in our egg bites right into the jars. So today, I have some sun-dried tomato in there. Fill the little jars just to the bottom of where the lid stops. And then seal the lids onto the jars just fingertip tight. That means that we want the air to come out of the jars if it wants to, but we don't want any water to come in. So you just tighten that lid until it's just fingertip tight. No need to get some strength in there and really tighten that lid on.
Then use some tongs to lower this into a water bath and cook these at 185 degrees for 45 to 60 minutes. Then take them out immediately, put them in the refrigerator, or eat them right away. When you're ready to eat the egg bite, you can eat it right out of the jar if you like. Or you can run a knife around the outside. And then invert it onto a plate. Top it with a little bit of basil and serve it to your guests. So is sous vide cooking safe? Yes, it is. If you're worried about bacteria, you need not worry. Bacteria is a die at 140 degrees, and they also die at lower temperatures if you keep that temperature for longer periods of time. Sous vide cooking holds those foods at low temperatures for enough time to kill any harmful bacteria. If you're concerned about cooking in plastic bags, well, you also need not be concerned. Use high quality bags that are BPA free and FDA approved. And remember, they don't get to very high temperatures because they're being cooked in a sous vide water bath. It is important, however, to cool your foods properly when you finish sous vide cooking or before you sous vide cook. Make sure that your steaks are kept cold. Make sure that you chill your chicken curries and stews appropriately if you're not eating them right away. Make sure your bag is fully submerged in that water bath while it cooks so that the water completely surrounds your food. Here are some tips and tricks to go along with your sous vide cooking. First, make sure you get good quality zipper sealable freezer bags, not storage bags. Freezer bags that are good quality tend to have better edges that don't allow the water to leak in and a better seal up top. You can reuse your sous vide bags, but not for sous vide. Sous vide food is completely ruined if any water at all gets into the bag. So use it for sous vide once, use it for something else afterwards. Tip number two is to use a trivet underneath your sous vide container. It doesn't get to super high temperatures, but it does become quite warm. So to protect your countertop, make sure you put a trivet down first and then put your container on top. Tip number three is to use hot tap water when you're filling your sous vide water bath. Hot tap water means it'll take less time for your sous vide water bath to come to temperature. Tip number four is if your sous vide bag is not sinking enough, use a weight of some kind just to make sure that it sinks low enough in the water. Tip number five is to remember to sear your meats either before or after sous vide cooking so that it has enhanced flavor and a prettier color. The last tip is for when you're sous vide cooking for a long period of time, say 72 hours if you're making a pulled pork roast. It's important to minimize the amount of evaporation you're going to get from your sous vide water bath, so make sure you cover it either with a lid or simply some aluminum foil. That will help keep that water in so you won't have to replace the water because you're never going to be able to replace the water with water that's exactly the right temperature. Let's talk about cleaning your sous vide machine. And this is the best part of all because there's honestly no cleaning at all. Simply unplug your machine, turn it off, remove it from the water bath, and then dry it well. Sous vide cooking might be a new cooking method for you, but I think if you do it just once, you'll realize how easy it is and what great results you get from it every single time. You can look at the cooking chart on Blue Jean Chef Cooking School to find out all your times and temperatures for all kinds of foods. Plus, check out the recipe section for all the sous vide recipes here, and we'll see you for another lesson really soon.